everyone. How have you been? This is Monday evening, late afternoon. It's about five o'clock, I guess. And I've just come out to the barn getting ready to do chores. You can hear the sheep, some of them. And I thought I'd take a few minutes to bring you along with me here to the mow. I've got to throw down some straw. And I wanted to talk to you a little bit about what's been happening here, why I've been missing in action a little bit. Haven't been on Instagram much um, and tell you some news that's happened here. So I know I'm going to try to get this done quickly because it's getting dark. And as of right now, we don't have any electricity in the barn. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit about why that is here in a little bit. So let me walk this way a little bit, turn around and, and show you what I've got going on here. We're in the top of the barn at the house. You can see you can hear the sheep downstairs. I think that's the yearling penny. She never shuts up. But anyway, let me turn around and <laughs> that changes the light, doesn't it? Anyway, here's our straw mow. What's left of it? I, I did end up with a pretty good amount of straw left over. We fed our last square bale of hay. We're feeding the last round bale right now, and but we have got grass coming, so that's good. The horses are mainly the ones getting the hay and then use if they're in the lambing jugs. We're almost done lambing. I've got two more to go. The two fin ewes uh, two that were bred for the first time this year. Well, first time for sushi. Second try for, for ninja. And she's going to be next probably. She's got a pretty big bag. It's full, but it's not hard. So anytime she could have her lambs. But So there's some of the straw. I've got to throw down a couple of bales. And then I don't think that you probably can see or it's in darkness, so you probably can't tell. Up here, this is the old, part of the old straw mow that is over the steps. But a week ago, a little over a week ago, we had a barn fire. Not a bonfire, but a barn fire. Our barn was on fire. And it was on fire up here. It was an electrical fire. But, miraculously, you can see we still have a barn. How we still have a barn? Why we still have a barn? Only God knows. Because while wood burned and started to burn through the side of the barn, the loose chaff that laid up there of straw, which would have normally gone up like tissue paper, didn't burn at all. This was a week ago, the night before Easter, and here in mid-Michigan we were having between 15 and 30 mile an hour winds consistently. So, and even though I had the barn doors closed, I mean, you can see, this is an old barn. And those, <laughs> there's plenty of airflow here. But if those big doors had been open, it would have been a whole different story, I'm sure. I don't really know what all to say about it, except to tell you, anyone who is a farmer, I guess, knows that that's probably your worst nightmare, especially an old structure like this. I had lambs and ewes and pens downstairs. <clears throat> the horses were outside and the sheep were where they could run in and out, but I had newborn babies that were in pens with their mother. Um, straw and hay. I didn't lose a single bale of straw in all of this. I'm so thankful to our rural fire, volunteer fire department. They were here in the blink of an eye and a good number of them are farmers themselves. And if they hadn't have been, this could have been a whole different story. And if the barn had gone up, our house is only a few yards away. At least the wheelchair ramp is, and that's a wooden structure. It just could have been so much different. And so my husband and I have talked about it. We can't even say it was a bad day because it could have been ever so much worse. But still, there's the shock that comes after that. And so for a few days, and I, I haven't wanted to talk about it, you know, like I said, and say, oh, we're looking for sympathy or, oh, poor Bill and Carrie, you know, what can we do to help? No, it's all under control and it's all going to be taken care of. But boy, that took a lot out of us for a couple of days, I have to say. Both of us, and we sat, we sat and talked about it, that it was just um, the aftermath of it, I guess. So an electrician will be here next week to work on it. Funny thing is that a year ago, I had some wiring, new wiring put in and had it inspected then. But we don't know yet until they come and look a little closer. Was it from the wind? Um, 
you know, we may never know. All we know is that we still have our big barn. We didn't lose any animals. We didn't lose any equipment or feed. I was in the barn. I was actually doing chores. And I'll tell you more a little bit about this later on, but um, there's just so many things that could have been different. So, but she's still here. I still walk out at night and look at her shape at her outline against the sky. And I, I just want to go down on my knees and be thankful. So anyway, I'm rambling now. I'm going to go up and throw some of that straw down. And then depending on how dark it is and what's going on in the barn, maybe we can sit down and have a little bucket talk and maybe get some lamb shots. So anyway, that's what we've been up to this last week, along with a few other things. So let me pause and hopefully I'll see you again in a few minutes downstairs. I just sat down for a quick minute. It's getting dark here really fast and I don't think that you're going to be able to see too much. There's Hilda in the lambing jug with her twin ram lambs. They were the ones just born. And only our second and third natural color this year. We All the rest are white, except for one other ram lamb. And I've got to spread some straw and then go up and maybe what I'll try to do is Sorry about that. Almost dropped the camera. And then talk to you a little bit more then about what has happened with the barn, what's happened with a few other things here around the farm, how lambing's going. It's going pretty well. I'd like to get some nice lamb photos when I get some time. But and I want to update you on ninja sheep. I don't know. I've been bribing the girls with some grain to come in the barn at night. I am still liking to shut them in. Ooh, look at that. It's terrible. I'm liking to shut them in at night just because of coyotes and dogs. And these last two that I have to lamb, the two fin sheep, have never lambed before. So I don't know what they're going to do. I just like knowing that even though they're in a big open area, at least they're not wandering around outside. And it's turned cold here again. You can see I'm dressed up. It's turned cold here again and it's raining. So I'm going to get back up to the house. And I will talk to you again really soon. Fill you in with the rest of our news. Welcome back. Should I say welcome back to you? Or maybe I should say I'm glad to be back or here visiting with you today. We're back in our usual podcast setup place. And you can see here, I think a little bit, my plant stand where I've got some seeds started. And I had hoped when I came to see you today or this recording that we would talk a little bit about gardening and some seed starting and uh, things like that growing around the farm. But instead, uh, this isn't even going to be really a proper podcast. It's just going to be me catching up with you about a few things that have happened since we last visited. And I wanted to get this done here on this last day of April. It's Tuesday, April 30th, and tomorrow is the 1st of May. And this is going to be a month that I'm going to be glad to leave behind this month of April. And so I'm just going to talk about that a little bit more and catch you up on some of those things. I think I will have started this little vlog out with some backstory, some clip of what's happened here recently with our barn catching on fire. And so you will have seen that. And I wanted to share a little bit more about that with you. And uh, I should say, I didn't say it at the beginning, that my name is Carrie. I'm Mywell Mitten on Instagram and Ravelry. 
My husband and I have a small farm in the middle of the mitten, Michigan's Lower Peninsula. We have Cordale sheep, a pair of fin sheep, and a couple of chickens, and an old retired barn cat, a couple of horses. And so this is normally our vlog, our podcast, our journal about our farm, and specifically about raising sheep and growing wool throughout the year. Uh, but like I said, today's just going to be a little catch-up vlog. So enough rambling on about that. April started out with some distressing news. Um, excuse me, just one minute. Okay, I'm back. Honest to Pete, guys, I have started this. This will be the fifth time today. <laughs> The phone has rang. The cat needed to go out or come in. I can't remember now which one. And I don't know. Anyway, maybe this isn't going to get done today after all, but we're going to try anyway. Where was I? So I was talking to you a little bit about what's been happening this month. Uh, I don't even have any knitting or spinning sitting here in front of me because I just want to get this, make this short and sweet. I'm fiddling with this because it keeps wanting to flip around, but I, I want to this is kind of symbolic for me and so I want to share it and talk about it a little bit. Anyway, April started out with news that one of our grandsons, our 16 year old grandson, is going to have to have a surgery. And I won't talk about it too much because that's his personal thing. Um, other than you all know as grandparents or, or moms, dads, brothers, sisters, that a major surgery in the family affects all of you or a major health issue. He has to have back surgery, a spinal surgery, and it's a pretty big deal. And especially for a 16 year old, I think, or probably for anyone any age, but you know, 16. And this is our healthy, strong boy. Um, he had no symptoms of any issues. He helps me tremendously here on the farm. He throws feed sacks over his shoulder. He hauls manure. He moves round bales with his dad. He you know, he's my guy who comes in and here, grandma, I'm going to do that. I'm going to move that. Don't you do it. Um, you know, shovels my walk, all of those things. And never has a headache, never complains about a backache, anything. But some issues were found. And like I said, not to go into a lot of detail, but coming up in the first part of June, that's going to be happening. And that really threw us all for a loop because he was so healthy. He's not, he doesn't play sports, so he hadn't had a physical for a while, and his, my daughter thought when he turned 16 he should have one. And anyway, that's going to be happening. So if you could keep us in your thoughts and prayers, we would appreciate it. And we're believing for good things. He has a good attitude. He likes the doctor. Um, the doctor specializes in this, the surgeon. And so Thing, it's going to be all right, but it's just something that you have to come to grips with, right? And then he's going to have a lot of physical therapy and a lot of work to get stronger and heal fast or to heal well. So that's going to probably take up a lot of our summer. So that was how we started out, and it took a little while to process that. Then I think I mentioned in my last video, at my last podcast, that we were having some plumbing issues here in the old house. And we got that resolved in a final, long, convoluted way. And thank God for my nep for our nephew, who's a plumber, who actually finally came and diagnosed the problem for us and fixed it after I'd called a plumber and was really dissatisfied with the work that was done there. And they were pointing me in a direction that would have cost us a lot of money and a lot of time. And it was a simple matter of a toilet being needing to be repaired. So thank God for that. Um, got that fixed and our washing machine quit. It's two years old. I fought and kicked and tried real hard not to have to get one of those new water saving machines. When I had to replace it, I went with the most basic one that I could find and the one that was hi most highly recommended on Consumer Guide. And it lasted um, two years, almost to the day. And it's not, even though some things were under warranty, this is a major thing that's not under warranty and would cost more to fix than it would to replace, as many new things are made. But um, 
put the word out to friends and neighbors and someone has an older machine that uh, it works fine that we're going to be getting an old machine not one of these new ones so I'm looking forward to having that again as someone who cares for a person who's bedridden most of the time you all know that that makes a lot of laundry usually small loads but there's usually a couple of them going every day so washing machine is a pretty important part of our lives here so there was that uh, and I told you the story you saw the story about ninja sheep my Finn you and her fleece issues her skin issues and I think we've I don't know if we've diagnosed it but we're doing what we can to help her along and I think in talking to a few other Finn breeders I kind of suspected that maybe because they're a primitive breed would they be something like Icelandics and Shetlands who will grow uh, they'll shed their old fleece and a new one will come in some of them and it seems like that there are some Finn sheep that do that and that that might have been what was happening with her our shearing was scheduled for later than we normally do it I would normally would have liked to have been sharing in April and if we had done that she might have been okay but because we couldn't get scheduled until May 10th uh, that was going to be kind of late and her fleece is shot now it's she's rubbed it off in patches the rest is felted I have used hand shears and taken some of it off as best I could to try to make her a little bit more comfortable I thought about maybe um, some shots of st steroid of some kind um, but my and my husband agreed but like he said we can't you know she's close to lambing and so we can't do that at this time so I've added some kelp to the diet some sea kelp I think that might help and we get her through lambing and get her sheared and and uh, hopefully get her back on track I think the nutritional needs of of an unimproved breed or a primitive breed are different than those of the wool breeds like my Coradales are so that could have been part of it as well you know a combination of those things the other fin sheep that I have seems fine they're full sisters a year apart but uh, her fleece seems fine so uh, so that brings me to another one of our, our uh, bad news of, of April and that is that our shearer uh, a young man who we used for the first time last year and who we liked really well uh, had a terrible tragedy in his family and he called to tell us that he's going to take some time off of shearing and I don't blame him a bit um, he's such a nice young man and such a good job shearing and they're facing a terrible loss and so I feel so terrible about that but at the same time that sent us into a panic because finding a sheep shearer is a difficult thing and um, especially because he is we're not the only ones he was shearing for and so a lot of people were on the look for a shearer and so the shearers that we do have available to us we're getting you know mass calls to see who could come and finding one that's not so terribly far away and who does like I said who does wool sheep we did finally find someone and I, I enjoyed visiting with him and think that it's going to be okay but it did put our shearing date off even farther but not by much only by a week so May 18th is our new shearing date and I share that with you not only because that's another one of the bad things of April but um, there are some of you who are waiting for fleeces we have about half of our fleeces reserved so it's going to be a little farther out and I will try to contact each one of you individually that are waiting and while we're speaking of that I want to thank everyone who uh, spoke and, and requested one of the fiber samples that I talked about last time I got most of those sent out before lambing and the barn fire happened but there are still a few that I've got to send out there's about four of you I think so if you haven't received your fleece sample yet it is coming it is on the way and I apologize for the delay thank you for your patience and I look forward to hearing how the rest of you uh, like your fleeces I am going to do something have some kind of a giveaway of raw fleece for those of you who did try the samples and I'll lay out the details of that when I've got them clear in my head but if you did get a sample if you share it on Instagram and you talk about it a little bit good or bad even if it's something that you didn't care for or that you found difficult or you weren't impressed with we want to hear that too because that's part of our quality control right so thank you again for those of you who were interested um so then what else well the barn fire is the biggest one and 
I have to tell you guys, like I said in the in the previous clip that I did from the barn, I think that's every farmer's worst nightmare, biggest fear, and especially in an old hip roof barn like that, we're just so thankful that it's still with us. It was, uh, I think I mentioned, it was the night before Easter. We were having high winds here in the area, and I was actually in the barn doing chores. I'd gone down, I'd been in the straw mound, threw down straw, and then I was down there uh, putzing around a little bit, you know, um, I had used in the lambing jugs, so that means more water pails and they have to get clean and take a little longer. And I'd gone outside, I'd taken hay outside to the horses, and the wind was really blowing, and I could smell, it smelled like something was burning, like leaves burning. And I thought, now who would be foolish enough to burn on such a windy day as this? And I got the horses fed and came in, hooked the hose up, went back out, and I could see smoke then and really smell it. And I thought, I better go up to the house and see what's going on. Somebody's house might be on fire, or if they are burning, I want to make sure it's not too close. Now, not realizing that it was us that was on fire. And as I started up the steps of the barn, I heard someone calling my name, and it was our neighbor across the road telling me to get out of the barn and that it was on fire. And as I started up the steps, the smoke was rolling down and cinder or, you know, little bits of fire were falling down the steps. And so I stopped and went back around the other side. I turned the water back on, you know, just thinking, well, it must have just started. Maybe we could uh, get it out. But as soon as I think, came out of the barn, the neighbors had called the fire department as soon as they saw the smoke. And I could already hear the sirens from our local fire, our volunteer fire department. So they were already on the way and thank God they were. And so um, I just, I'm so appreciative to good neighbors and to everyone who came, people came, because of course I wanted to be in the house with Bill, but I had to be outside too. Um, and our kids came, grandkids and extended family and friends came. And then I kept trying to run in and just reassure him of what was going on or let him know what was going on too. And the fact that they got it out and it just, it didn't go any farther than it did is still unbelievable to both of us. And we're so, so, so thankful. So, um, so with the, like I said, the electrician is coming, but I, now we're paranoid about everything. I had a brush pile and some old things that I needed to get a burning permit for that I was going to burn. And now I don't even know if I want to do that. Um, you know, a little bit gun shy now or just walking out the door and smelling that smoke, it's like, oh my gosh. But um, yeah, that was a pretty sleepless night, uh, but it was the week of the full moon and we could get up and go out and make sure the fire hadn't restarted and see the outline of the barn against the night sky and know that she was still there and just count our blessings. So anyway, that's where I've been. That's what's been happening. And um, but we're really going to look forward to May coming. Tomorrow's May 1st, and I'm going to believe that it's going to be a better better time. I want to introduce you guys to the lambs here pretty soon when I can get out and get some good pictures of them out in the green grass. We have two more to lamb, and then we'll be done. And um, in honor of, this is kind of a symbolic thing for me, of putting this April behind us and uh, spring and summer starting, this is one of the brooches from Patricia at Nidography. And you know, Patricia, I didn't write it down and now I can't remember what you call these. But they're the Norwegian calendar. Um, she, she based them off, handmade from her farm. And I was watching, uh, so glad that she's back and vlogging again. And I watched her most recent episode. It had been a long time. I was so, so glad to see her. And she talked about making these and what they mean. And oh, Patricia and I feel it seems like a lot, our paths have been kind of similar here recently. But when I was watching her talking about these, I thought, I'm going to wear one of these today and tomorrow for the first day of May. And just believe that these, that good things are coming. Know that good things are coming. So I feel uh, it's here uh, above my heart. And so I know that Patricia's here with me too. And many of you are, and I appreciate that. And I want to send that love back to you all. But so here's my little symbolism of the good things that are going to be coming. So I've rambled long enough, and uh, I, 
I just wanted to share these things with you. Like I said, not, not for anyone to feel sorry for us, but just so you know what's going on and to know that these are the things of life that happen on the farm, right? So next time, maybe we'll be more back on track. I hope you'll come back for that. And um, I guess that's just about it. Just about it for us. So I hope you all take care. I'll see you on Instagram and um, through your podcast for those of you who are excited. I showed a picture this morning of our seedlings that are coming. I haven't, uh, it's a couple years I haven't started my own, but I, I did this year and and I'll talk about that a little bit again as I had planned to. So enjoy this last day of April and even enjoy more tomorrow's first day of May when it comes. And let's move on forward with, with good things to happen. Thanks for listening, guys, to my story. And I had no real words of wisdom, did I? Just sharing with you what, what's happening around here. So have a good day. Enjoy your knitting and spinning and gardening and lambs if you have them, fiber animals. And we'll talk to you again real soon. Bye now.